Golf Central on YouTube is brought to you by the new Paradigm Woods and Irons from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Well, what a field we've got here at the WM Phoenix Open, eight of the world's top ten. Let's take a look at the world number one, Rory McIlroy, and his tee time on Thursday, 9.48 a.m. Eastern, going out alongside Colin Morikawa and Hideki Matsuyama. That is a seven combined majors in one tee time. And McIlroy talked with George Chavarikas about why his game has been so good over the last year. Uh, consistency in what I'm doing like I, I feel like I've sort of had the same uh, swing thoughts and and working on the same things for for a long time so I think that's given me some consistency and and just some continuity as well like you, you know not having to come back from a tournament and try to reinvent the wheel one week and then go to the next tournament and try to sort of figure it out from there I, I feel like I've 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 just sort of I found a formula um, after the Ryder Cup in 21 that's really stuck with me all the way through and until now so it's been a real consistent like 15 or 16 months of of just trying to do the same thing and, and just get a little bit better in some areas we can see the consistency we were debating this on golf today last week if 2014 Rory McIlroy or 2023 Rory McIlroy is the better version what would you say I'd like to think 2023 version um, I you know, the one thing about 2014 was, and, and you know, previous years in my career, the highs were very high, um, but the lows were pretty low too. I, I wasn't maybe as consistent as um, as I am now. If I look at my statistical categories, I, I think I've improved in pretty much every every area. Um, or you know, I'm consistently pretty high on on every area. So, you know, it means that. If I have an off day with my irons that my short game and my putting can save me, or if I have an off day with, you know, any part of my game, that there's always other aspects that can sort of bail me out, which I don't think I had previously, which is, you know, it's nice to be able to fall back on. Like the full tool set now, I, it seems I'd like. I'd like to think so. Man, I mean, you know, there's some day, there's, you know, we can all improve, we can all get better, and I'm constantly trying to see where I can get better, but at the same time, you know, to have the, confidence to know that you know i'm a better putter than i used to be and i'm you know I, I i have a good short game and i can hit my wedges close so i don't have to rely just on my ball striking like i i feel like i previously had to so you got like a little preview two years ago at the wm phoenix open but it's different with covid capacity being constrained we were just chatting before the interview saturday will be the second largest sporting event in u.s history just saturday alone so there's going to be 200 15,000 plus people when you see the scale of it and you're just getting the experience on Tuesday and Wednesday it almost feels like a weekend at a lot of PGA Tour events your expectations yeah it's it's wild um you know to have obviously this event and the Super Bowl on same city in the same weekend is 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 crazy but I think it's a great spectacle for our game I really do I, you know I, I don't think that every week should be quite like this but you know to have an event like this on our calendar that um, has so many eyeballs on it and you know the attendance is so high you know it's a, it's a wonderful thing so I think you know I said in my press conference there like this was an obvious tournament to make designated or elevated or you know whatever you want to call it I think that um, I, I'm going forward um, you know I think it's a pretty obvious one to, to keep in that upper echelon of, of PJ Tour events. Final question I mentioned you've had three wins in your last seven worldwide starts John Rahm is world number three he's had four and then Scotty Scheffler defending champ who hasn't won since the Masters is kind of sandwiched in between you guys what's the back and forth been like with you and John where you guys keep stacking up wins and you're all playing at such a high level? Honestly, no back and forth. I think we're both really happy to see each other play so well. Um, you know, John and I have formed a pretty good relationship, you know, over the past couple of Ryder Cups. And anytime John wins, I'm happy. It's great for, it's great for him. It, I think it's great for the game of golf. It's great for the Ryder Cup team um, on, on the European side. So, um, you know, we haven't seen each other since Dubai at the, you know, the end of November. Um, so it'll be good to play in the same field with them again and, and, and sort of hopefully, you know, go to battle with them over the weekend. But, um, you know, I think the more of these events that we have, these sort of big elevated events, the more chance that these, you know, top guys are going to have a, you know, we're going to have a chance to go up against each other a little more often, which I think is not only great for us, but, but great for everyone watching at home as well. OK, well, it will be a late, early start for the defending champion, Scotty Scheffler, for the first two rounds. 2.55 Eastern start 
for him tomorrow. He'll be playing alongside 20-year-old Tom Kim and Victor Hovland, who George also caught up with Scheffler. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm close to playing some really good golf. Um, definitely a nice stretch of consistent golf is good. I feel like I'm just been kind of on the outside looking in going into Sunday. And so hopefully, you know, start now, I'll start putting myself in position on Sundays versus, you know, being a little bit too far behind. Last year, this time, very different narrative around your game. How did you view Scotty Scheffler, the PGA Tour pro, going into last year's WM Phoenix Open versus this year? I don't know. It's a little different being the defending champion, but at the end of the day, I don't get any extra strokes. I'm still approaching events the exact same. I'm just trying to show up and do my best and see where that puts me. You see the sandwich where Rory's at number one. He's won three of his last seven starts. John Rahm at number three has won four of seven. Are you feeling heat where these two guys, I mean, how they've elevated their game recently? Well, I think th they're both playing great golf right now. And, you know, like I said, I'm still kind of on the outside looking in on Sundays and, um, you know, John won the first two events that I played in this year. And so obviously right now, I think he's playing the best golf in the world. And, you know, Rory um, had another win recently. And, you know, it's it's a fun time to be to be out here playing professional golf. Guys are playing great. And that's what you want as a, as a player. You want to beat guys when they're playing their best and go have fun battles. And, you know, it should be a fun week this week. We have the biggest stage in professional golf here just from the sheer number of fans. Now we have a field to match up with it. What's it like to see that sync up? Yeah, I think it's really special. I think uh, with an event like this, it usually always draws a, a really good field. And I think this year it's a great field. You know, we have so many of the top players in the world here and it should be a fun week. And looking at another top player this week, back to those early tee times, Xander Shoffley goes off at 9.59 a.m. Eastern. He'll be playing alongside Jordan Spieth and Tony Finau, who also addressed the media earlier today. Rory was asked in here earlier if he feels like the best player in the world, and he said right away, yes. I'm curious if you've ever felt like you were, number one, the best player on the planet. I feel like I've had flashes uh, where, where I've played to that level, but... Um, I think the beautiful part of, of, of what I'm doing is I feel like I haven't even touched up on that yet. So um, there's a lot that I need to do to get to that point where I wake up and can just do everything with the golf ball um, and the mental game with that also follows. So, yeah, I've had f flashes and moments, but um, it's definitely something that everyone, Rory and the guys who are very confident in saying it, they've, they've been there at number one. Um, they believe they can be number one, and I, I do as well. But... I just know that I, I need to do a few more things uh, with my game in order to do that. So, um, you know, well on my way. This week can be exhausting or a little bit more tiring than other PGA Tour weeks. Is is that the case with you? Uh, yeah, you know, probably. At the end of the day, you're maybe a little bit more mentally drained than normal. Um, just a little bit more focus. There's a, there, there's a lot of really good holes in this course that demand a lot of focus and when there's a lot of stuff going on and you're waiting on a tee box for 20 minutes you still have to step up and, and sort of sack up and hit a really good shot so um, I think for those reasons maybe it becomes a little mentally draining uh, at times. You're at a point now where you're feeling almost 100% no more excuses is that the case? You, 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 you're at your best? Yeah I feel I feel very healthy which is great um, it's been you know Palm Springs and Torrey was a little little iffy um, good days bad days uh but just kind of a healing process so very lucky like i said before i got a really good team around me and they've been telling me and giving me good advice on what i can and can't do and what i should and shouldn't do so um i've been following their every step and um feeling feeling really good uh body wise